One of the handy features of the Pro's Kit NT2017 is the ability to check capacitors. I'm going to um, put some crocodile clips on the probes to make it easier. I just poke them through there so you can see them easier. Okay, once you've connected the probes, you need to turn the dial to the 1K ohm settings. And if you see underneath, there's a little C1 in brackets, which corresponds with the C1 scale on here. So as we're going to use the ohm setting, first thing we need to do is to short out the leads and use the zero ohm adjust to zero the meter. Okay, a capacitor is like a battery in that it stores electricity. So when power is applied to it, you have a negative where the stripe is, and the other side is positive, and it will hold a charge until it's needed. Now in time, the capacity of the capacitor will reduce and become less effective and eventually will fail totally. Now this is a good capacitor. Before you check the capacitor, you should always make sure it's discharged by shorting out the terminals. Connect the positive to the positive side, negative to the negative side, and the needle will flick across quickly to roughly the capacity of the capacitor. And then as it fills up, it will go all the way back down to zero. And when it's on zero, that means the capacitor is full and that's good. I will look at another one. This one was actually damaged in transit. It got crushed so I didn't like to use it so I replaced it. But it still comes out as good. So if we just short out the terminals first. Like positive to positive, negative to negative to negative you can see it's quickly filling up. Now the higher the, the value of the capacitor, the slower the needle will move. This one is 35 volt, 470 microfarads. And as you can see, as it gets to the end of the scale, it does get slower. And this one will eventually go down to virtually zero. Which again is a sign of a good capacitor. As I said, the higher the capacity, this one is 2200 microfarads at 10 volts, the slower the needle will move. So again, make sure it's discharged. Positive to positive, negative to negative. See the needle flicked right across right, because it's 2200 and it's slowly now moving back because this one has more capacity and it takes longer to charge. Now, this is a, a used capacitor so. It has deteriorated a little bit. Um, generally, anything under five on this scale I keep is reusable. Five between five and ten, used for experimenting, messing around with. Anything over ten, I just throw them away.
See the needle moving very slowly. The closer it gets to zero, the slower it will get, as there's more electricity stored in the capacitor. The resistance increases and it's harder to push more in. So the needle is still moving and it will slowly move virtually right over to the zero. What does a bad capacitor look like? Well, you can see for a start this one has obvious signs of damage. It leaked. Um, very often the bottom bulges. This one, it actually ejected fluid from the top which run down the capacitor and it collected around the bottom which made it go rusty. But let's see what this one looks like when we test it. So we go positive to positive, negative to negative. Right, it still goes over to 2200 microfarads. Slowly fills up like the last one, but this one's even slower. And you can see now it's stopped. So it's taken very little current and that's an obvious foul. Okay, this is a smaller capacitor, it's 25 volt 100 microfarads. So it has different characteristics. If we connect this one negative to negative, don't forget to shorten out, positive to positive. Right, initially this one looks fine, it charges up, and you see the needle starts moving backwards. And it's still over 5, so there's something wrong with that one, so I will discard that. This one come from a power supply that did actually foul. It's a 10 volt, 1000 microfarad. Short it out first. Positive, negative. And again, you see the needle doesn't move very far before it stops. Again, that one's a foul. Now the obvious sign that the capacitors are not working as they should. I don't know if you can see that, but the the top very often bulges. Now this capacitor, the top is actually bulging. It does. It did still actually work. But if we test it, we can see even at this level the capacitor could still work even though it's on its way out. And I just changed them purely because the top was bulging. There was actually two of them. This one, if you test it, it sort of comes out alright, comes out okay too. But as I had the power supply apart, I thought it's better to change them while I was there. So they are rejects. And that's it, that is how to test capacitors with a pros kit MT2017. Thank you, if you like this video please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Many thanks and I hopefully see you with the next video.